Hi students, welcome to this chapter on the molecular genetics. So this is chapter 17. Right, before we get started, please make sure that you have your notes with you. And this is the first video that we'll be going through. Now in this chapter of molecular genetics, you might be wondering what exactly will you be learning? Now we'll be learning in depth about this um, structure that's called DNA, right? How exactly is the structure being formed? And we'll also be learning about chromosomes and genes, as well as what are some of their functions. So throughout the entire chapter, you realize that I'll talk a lot about DNA. And in fact, we have already learned about DNA much earlier on last year, when you were in SEC3, in the first chapter. We learned that DNA actually contains the genetic material, and they're actually found within the nucleus of the cells. So after this video, you should be able to state what exactly is DNA, the structure of DNA, as well as to describe the basic unit of DNA, which we call a nucleotide. Before we get started, let's take a little short clip to look at an animation of how exactly does a DNA molecule look like. But remember, DNA is so small that you can't really visualize it with your naked eye. Do you recognize this molecule? This is DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid. Now, let's move to a more simplified representation of DNA to discuss the details. We can unwind the double helix like this, so that we can see the chemical structure inside. Each strand is a polynucleotide, meaning the strand is made up of many individual units called nucleotides. A nucleotide has three components, the five carbon sugar, a phosphate group, and one of four possible nitrogenous bases, adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. As you can see from the video, a DNA structure looks like a coil, right? So you see this structure called a double helix structure. And within it, you will notice that there's certain things that we call bases. So there's uh, four of them that's listed over here. So a DNA is actually known as a deoxyribonucleic acid. So hence the word D, N, and A, right? It's actually a structure that contains all the genetic information about an organism. So for instance, in the earlier chapter, in inheritance, we learned about alleles, right? Alleles can code for the eye color, so and so forth. And all these alleles are actually found on the DNA. Yeah, so that's why we say that the DNA contains all the genetic information of an organism. In terms of its structure, every DNA molecule is actually made up of two strands. So that it's like two chains. And these are what we call polynucleotide chain, uh, sorry, polynucleotide strands. And these two strands are actually what we call anti-parallel strands. Now, what's the meaning of anti-parallel? Any parallel would mean that they're actually in opposite directions. So if you think about it, we are trying to say that there's two strings of structures. Okay, so this is what the first string, and this is the second string. And they're actually running in opposite direction. One goes from left to right, the other one goes from right to left. And together, when they form a structure, they actually further twist around each other to form what we call a double helix structure. So what you're seeing over here is called a double helix structure. Is if you look at it closely, you realize that it is um, about two of the strands, right? They're actually making a coil by themselves. So imagine that you have two strings. Each of the string, it forms a coil. The other string also forms a coil. That means it twists again, twists around each itself. Then they are overlapping with one another. So this is called a double helix structure. Now, every strand, every chain that you see just now, is actually made out of even smaller substances that we call a nucleotide. So if you were to look at the diagram in the previous slide, right, you'll notice that the strand itself is made out of even smaller structures as you can see in this red color box. Right? So it comprises of this uh, light blue shape as well as a dark blue shape. On the other side, it consists of this light blue shape and a yellow shape. Right? So this is actually what we call a nucleotide. So it's a bit like, you know, you learn in um, proteins, right? There's a lot of amino acids joined together. So same thing over here in the DNA, there's a lot of what we call nucleotide that's joined together with one another. And each of these nucleotides is actually made up of three different things. Number one, it's made up of a deoxyribose uh, sugar molecule, which you'll see as this pentagon shape. Number two, it has a phosphate group. Now, what's a phosphate group? You learn in chemistry, right, in the periodic table, there's actually this element called phosphor. Okay, so um, the phosphate group is actually just, we just need to know that it's a group that contains an element called phosphorus, right? So that's all we need to know. And more importantly, we need to know that in the nucleotide, there can be four different types of what we call nitrogenous bases. So if you look at the previous slide, right, let me just backtrack a bit. 
you notice that there's different shapes that's colored in the middle of the DNA. The green ones, the blue ones, the red ones, and the yellow ones. Right? These are actually what we call the nitrogenous base. Right? So these things together, they form what we call a nucleotide. There can be four types of nitrogenous base. They are known as adenine, thymine, guanine, as well as cytosine. To represent them, we use short form, which is the first alphabet of the base. So together, these structures, when they combine together, they actually form a nucleotide. So, what you can see is that the structure of the deoxyribose sugar, as well as the phosphate group, is the same throughout, no matter what's the case. But you can change the type of nitrogenous base. So, for instance, again, since every nucleotide must have part 1, part 2, and part 3 being combined together, we know that part 1 and part 2 is always the same. But it's for part 3, right? It can either be A, adenine, T, thymine, G, guanine, or C, cytosine. This means that there can be four types of combination coming out from the entire structure. Together, when we combine nucleotides one by one, they should form what we call polynucleotides. So if you join them up, that's what you get, what we call a polynucleotide. As you look at the structure, you realize that when they join together, there will be this part that only contains the phosphate group as well as the sugar. So all these are uh, all these purple color shape are uh, just sugar molecule, deoxyribose sugar. So there's this term that we call a sugar phosphate backbone that is referring to this entire part of the molecule that has the phosphorus, uh, the sorry, the phosphate group as well as the deoxyribose sugar. Then you have the bases that are sticking out in this manner. This entire thing is one strand, right? This is one strand of polynucleotide ch chain. But of course, in DNA, there's two strands, right? The two strands must be able to pair with one another. So, like what I said just now, there must be two anti-parallel strands. So what you realize is that in this diagram over here, this is actually one of the strands. And this part is another strand. Okay, so together, there's actually two strands in every DNA molecule. But interestingly, if you look at them, they actually invert of one another. Because if you focus on the phosphate group, right, the P over here, you'll notice that for <coughs> the left strand, the P is always at the top of the sugar, the purple shape. On the right strand, the P is always at the bottom of the purple shape. Right? This shows you that they're actually running in opposite direction. That's why you call it anti-parallel strands. And more importantly, you realize that within the two strands, there's actually a bit of pairing. This is what we call complementary base pairing. That means the bases that I shared with you just now, the A, the T, the C, and the G, they actually can pair up with another base on the other strand. Together, they will form what we call base pairing. Okay, and it must pair up in a specific manner. These are not enzymes, so let's not think of enzymes and substrates. But in terms of what we know from enzyme and substrate, we can apply it over here as well. So every one letter can only pair up with a specific other letter. So at A, we we'll always pair with T, G, we we'll always pair with C, right? So there's some form of a rule that you must obey in terms of the pairing. So adenine bonds with thymine, guanine bonds with cytosine, right? This is what we call complementary bases. It must always be in this particular manner. You can never pair up things that are not supposed to be paired up. For example, pairing up adenine with guanine or cytosine. So that doesn't happen at all in the real world. Okay, so it must always be within these two set of pairing, which means that A will be with T, C will be with G, right? So to make it uh, easier for everyone to remember, so this is what I call ATCG, right? So A pair with T, likewise T will pair with A. C pair with G, likewise G will pair with C. After which, after it forms the two strands, they will then coil around each other. That's where you get your double helix structure, like what I mentioned earlier on. Okay, so remember, number one, there's actually two strands, right? Two strands and they are actually what we call anti-parallel strands because they run in opposite direction. One from left to right, one from right to left. Secondly, they have what we call base pairing. This is where they help to pair up the different types of nucleotide, the bases, with one another. Okay, and the base pairing have a certain rule. A must be with T, C must be with G. After this entire thing is formed, it looks like a ladder. If you look at the first diagram over here, it looks like a ladder over here. 
with all the connecting uh, bases looking at the steps. Take the ladder, twist it around itself, coiling it around. That's why you get what we call a double helix structure, which is the one that you see over here for DNA. Right, this is the one that you usually will see on videos and whatnot. So it's really like thinking of each of the strands right, as a string. Right? Take the strings, after joining two different strings together, making sure that they're anti-parallel, that means they run in different direction. After them being pairing up, so this is like a base pairing. Then now what you do is that you twist the entire uh, structure within itself. That's where you will end up with what you call a double helix structure over here. Right, so that can be uh, you'll see a model when, when you uh, when you're in school, right? You know how the entire structure actually comes about. Okay, so before we end off this particular video, let's watch a short clip to summarize the entire learning in this chat in this part of the video. All cells require some form of instructions to be able to function properly. They need guidelines, rules, codes for making materials in the cell. And that code is DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. D for the name of the sugar, N and A for nucleic acid. DNA contains the information that determines inherited characteristics. It has the code for making proteins. DNA is found in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells and in the cytosol of prokaryotes. If we take a closer look at the chromatin inside the nucleus, we can see the structure of the DNA. The DNA has repeating subunits, and those subunits are called monomers, or nucleotides specifically. The nucleotide has three main parts, a phosphate group, a sugar, and a nitrogen base. In DNA, the name of the sugar is deoxyribose, which is part of DNA's name. And there are four nitrogen bases in DNA. The bases are thymine, adenine, cytosine, and guanine. Two of the bases are purines, which have a two-ring structure, and two bases are pyrimidines, which have a one-ring structure. Adenine and guanine are purines, cytosine and thymine are pyrimidines. I remember the pyrimidines are the bases with a Y in their name, just like pyrimidine has a Y in its name. A purine always pairs with a pyrimidine, and the slanted shape of the DNA molecule causes it to form a spiral or helix. Because DNA is double-stranded, we use the phrase double helix to describe its structure. There are four scientists who are credited with discovering the shape of DNA, and they are Watson, Crick, Wilkins, and Franklin. All of them received a Nobel Prize for their work, except for Rosalind Franklin. She died before the prize was given. Each of these scientists played a role in piecing together the structure of DNA. They learned that along the sides of the molecule was a backbone made of alternating sugar and phosphate molecules. On the inside, like the rungs of a ladder, are the nitrogen bases. Adenine and thymine form hydrogen bonds together. Cytosine and guanine form hydrogen bonds together. To help me remember which bases link together, I think of writing the letters. A and T both use straight lines. C and G use curved lines. I also know that A and T have two hydrogen bonds, but C and G have three hydrogen bonds by saying AT2, CG3. Silly things like this are actually a great memory tool. Strands of DNA are said to be complementary to one another because A will always be with T and C will always be with G based on the number of hydrogen bonds that they want to make. You can predict the complementary strand if you know the other strand. All right, so as you can see from the video itself, they talk a lot about what we call the deoxyribose sugar. They talk a lot about of what we call the phosphate group as well as especially the nitrogenous base, A with T, C with G, and how they are actually bonded by hydrogen bonds. Now, you will need to do a few things to consolidate your learning in this chapter, or rather in this video. Number one, you need to remember what are the form of base pairing. So which alphabet will be which alphabet? Number two, you must be able to recognize how does the 
structure as shown over here looks like. So for example, which part of it is the phosphate group? Which part of it is the sugar? And which part of it is the nitrogenous base? Right, that is what is required from you. And with that, we have come to the end of this first clip. In the second video, I'll be talking about how does the chromosomes, DNA and gene relate to one another. Thank you.